Let me start by welcoming us back again to church. <laughs> these past seven days, um, these past seven days has been exhausting, right? But at the same time, it has also been refreshing. Yeah, it's been refreshing. So the, the greatest advice I'll give to you is go back to your notes, go back to the tapes. Listen to it again, listen. And then when you listen, you make action plans. So whatever you listen to, and you don't write down plans, and you don't write down how you intend putting it to reality, most times it won't work. So like prayer and faith conference has come. We talked about prayer, we talked about faith, we talked about vision, we talked about so many things, both in your relationships and whatsoever. Write down what the Lord has told you through each speaker. It might not be 25 things. It could be just one or two, three or four. Put it down, and then you start asking yourself, how do I do this? How do I get to this point? Now, you, the first thing you do is, how am I going to live in the realities of this for one day? How am I going to live in the realities of this for one week? How am I going to live in the realities for the, of this for one month? Don't worry about one year. One month will lead you to two months. Two months will lead you to four months. Four months will lead you to six months. Six months a year, a year will lead you to three years till it becomes a lifestyle. Are you listening to me? So don't be focused on the bigger picture. Start with the small ones first. When you find victory in the small ones, you will have enough strength for the big ones. So, but if you don't find victory in the small ones, you will lose the needed strength you have to get into the big ones. So just you know, put down, what have I gotten from this program? What is the Lord speaking to me about? There are so many things the Lord has spoken to me about, and in fact, as I am right now, there are certain things I'm not ready to do in ministry till I sort a few things out. And the Lord was speaking to me through some of the speakers. And in fact, I was talking, I, I called about three of my sons, I said, you know what, I'm going to give you dates. I'm going to visit this, I'm going to visit this between now and December. This is what I want to do in the ministry, and this and that and that and that. I've already started putting into motion a few of the things God has spoken to me about prayer and faith conference. So you better start your own. Or the prayer and faith conference could be a useless experience for you. And you don't want that. God has blessed every single soul in this event. But what you do with the blessing is in your hands. Are you listening to what I'm saying? So find out what you would do with what God has given you in this conference. So for the past one month, we've been talking about walking in the spirit, walking in the spirit or the spirit of a man, how the spirit of a man should function. So today, we're going to take a step forward and get into how to walk in the spirit, how to walk in the spirit. So I'm going to give you what I can call the ABC of walking in the spirit. It's not difficult to walk in the spirit. Don't you never say, it's not, it's not difficult to walk in the Spirit. If it's not possible to walk in the Spirit, the Scripture would not require you to walk in the Spirit. Telling you to walk in the Spirit does not mean you should be, you should enter into Spiritism. <laughs> no. Telling you to walk in the Spirit does not mean you should be weird. You know? When people now see you, they can't have interaction with you. Now that's not what it means. So, brother, good morning. That's not working in the spirit. <laughs> oh, that's not working in the spirit, okay? Once again, I want to say a very big thank you to everyone who the Lord used in making the prayer and faith conference a success. There are so many people I would have called their names, you know? But if I, I mean, there are so many people. This guy, uh, thank God, where is he? he you, 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 I don't know, you defy the um, expectations. God bless you so much. Mr. Bethel, God bless you. So many people. But, um, Mr. Jude, um, a lot of people don't even know you, but you did an amazing job. I, I celebrate you so much. God bless you. You know, Pastor Dennis, all of you, you people are amazing, 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 wonderful people. Um, thank you so much for yielding yourselves and God using you to bless lives. I, I celebrate you all. Um, okay. So, 
How do we walk in the Spirit? That's the question for tonight. How do we walk in the Spirit? That's the question for tonight. I want to start by telling us that walking in the Spirit requires decisions. And what I mean by decisions, intentional decisions on daily basis. You must make intentional decisions. Walking in the Spirit today does not guarantee you walk in the Spirit tomorrow. So you must make that decision daily. And the decision you make today will build up more and more tomorrow. And you know that we went through Galatians chapter 5. And the latter part of that scripture, Apostle Paul was giving us the difference between walking in the spirit and walking in the flesh. Where he says, if sins, or if, let me use the word, if, we live in the spirit, let us walk in the spirit. If. That word if can also mean sins. We walk in the spirit. Or we live in the spirit. Let us walk in the spirit. And through this series, we've, we've been made to understand that believers have the life of God. We have the Holy Spirit. We have the life of God in our regenerated spirit. And that is what gives us connection with God. And it's that connection with God that empowers us to walk in the spirit. We said that communi communication with God is spirit to spirit. Two of us. Is spirit to what? Uh, am I, are you following me? Uh, am I with some people tonight? Have I left you at the Buzo Road? Are you here with me? Okay. <laughs> but the problem is that walking in this spirit or walking in the spirit requires our daily intentional decisions. New Living Translation says, if we are living now by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our life. Now, the first question is, are you following the leading of the Spirit? That is the first question to answering the first question. If that makes sense. Are you following the leading of the Spirit? Now, there is another question I want to bring up from there, from this other question now. Do you even understand or do you even know when the Spirit is leading? That's another thing. Because if you don't know when the Spirit is leading, you cannot follow what you don't know or what you cannot receive. Now watch, watch this. So, if we are now living by the Holy Spirit, let us follow the Holy Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. It means that one of the basic requirements for walking in the Spirit is obedience. Obedience. Obedience to the written word of God. Number two, hearing what the Spirit is saying and then following the directives of the Spirit in our daily decisions. And now I want to make it very clear. Even in little matters, the Holy Spirit wants to have a say in your life. <laughs> Even in little matters. Do you know that as simple as the color of the clothes you wear to where you're going to, it can change the landscape of your day. Hello? 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 Do you know that? As little as what you call little decisions. Little decisions. The Holy Spirit wants to have a say even in the little decisions of your life. How you pack your car. 
and things like this. Just very little things. These things can save your life. These things can also destroy you. Have you seen a person, he wants to park a car here, and something says, don't park that car there, and he parks it there. Five minutes, something happens at that same spot. To you normally, that decision is, doesn't make sense. If you want to be led of the Spirit or walk in the Spirit, let me use that word, if you want to walk in the Spirit, you must be ready to intentionally make decisions, to obey, to listen, and to follow the leading of the Spirit in the basic decisions day to day. Not just, not just decisions that have a bigger picture to it, you know, who I marry. That's why you will see people, the only time you want to hear the voice of God, the window said it, is when you want to get married. That's why it's taking you too long. That's the problem. The only time you want to get married, you want to hear the voice of God, is when um, it's time to jabber. Because to you, to you now, this is very important. But at that stage, hmm? at that stage, this thing called, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, uh, desperation. You know, desperation has a way of clouding your senses to understanding what the Spirit is saying. God doesn't want you coming to Him when you are desperate. The leading of God should be normal for us. Day-to-day -day decisions, intentional. You should make it a point of duty that if you want to take a decision, I want to go out now, I want to do this, I want to do this, just have stillness in your spirit to understand what God is saying. And you know the funny thing is that God must not speak to you audibly. He can speak to you through your thoughts. There are so many ways he can speak to you. Don't worry, on Sunday we'll be talking about different ways we can hear from God. You will understand that there. I want you to understand it. that it's critical if you are to live in the Spirit. Because one of the things that sponsors carnality is when a man is withdrawn from the voice of God. One of the things that sponsors carnality is when a man is withdrawn from the voice of God, from the leading of God. What happens when you get carnal? You have stopped being led by God. You are now being led solically. You are now led by your soul, by your normal emotions. You are meant to be led by your spirit, by your spirit in unison with the spirit of God. That's how a man should be led. So if that's not happening, you've probably been led by your intellect, what you know, what you have read. And these things cannot be trusted. This is what we said last week. And it's very important. The littlest, if there's a word like that, the least details of your life. The very important decisions of your life, where you school, this and that and that and that and that. In fact, one of the very first questions I ask people is, where you are in your life, who led you there? Who led you there? In this city you are now, in Asaba. By God's grace, you are in Asaba now. Some of you are not even born in Asaba. Was it the Lord that led you here? Are you sure you are here? You know, so we read Psalm 23 every day. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in grief. You know, all those I shall not want, I shall not this, that, 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 that. The most important thing there is that the Lord is my shepherd. If he's your shepherd, that is when you are secure of provision. That is, why, that is when you are secure of peace, of green pasture. When the Lord is your shepherd, it means that the Lord is leading you. If the Lord is leading you, forget about your provisions he will provide. If the Lord is leading you, there will be peace. If the Lord is leading you, and though there are darkness, evil, 
valley of the shadow of death, you will not fear evil. Why? Because the Lord is there. You are sure that is why sometimes two people can be facing the same thing. One is facing it with joy because he's sure this is what the Lord told him. He's in the right will of God. He's right in the center of God's will. So he knows with every assurance that this is not the end of his life. A lot of times why we are too troubled about the tempest is because we are not even sure. In fact, a lot of us, we know we drove ourselves into this tempest. I'm telling you the gospel truth. Nothing beats being led by God. Nothing beats that. You're sure. What, you know, my career, my career, this, my this, and that, and that, and that, and that. It's very important, but allow the Lord to take a lead role in your life. And you see your life change. There are certain things people call wilderness experiences. And God calls it preparation. Uh, there's, a, there's a university called the, the School of Wilderness that God takes everybody he wants to deal with. The world will call it wilderness experience, but God calls it preparation. When you get into that school, just relax. God is watching you. He's watching how temperate you are. He's watching how character is formed in you. If you see anybody that graduates from that school, the next thing that person picks up is speed. Those that have gone before him, it doesn't matter how far they've gone. It is the hand of God that takes a man from point A to point B. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Some of the things you think you have lost, as long as you are in the center of God's will for your life, you have not lost it. You just dropped it to pick up a better one in the future. It's only a matter of time. I'm telling you realities with God. I'm telling you realities with God. But the problem a lot of times is people don't know when they are suffering and when God is preparing them. The difference is, uh, did God lead you? So for example, the scripture says that the Spirit of the Lord led Jesus into the wilderness. And there he prayed and was tempted for 40 days and 40 nights. True or false? Who led him there? The Spirit of the Lord. So even though he was in the wilderness for 40 days, he was still being prepared. So his attitude in that wilderness is so different because there is an assurance that this is where he's meant to be. God never skips process. No matter how anointed you are. Anointing does not make you skip your process of preparation. Because God knows that anointing without preparation is a setup for his own kingdom. Are you listening to what I'm saying tonight? Are you listening to what I'm saying tonight? All right. I just, divert, I just digressed a little bit. Let's go back to how to walk in the Spirit. But it's very important that I tell you this. Are you following the leading of the Spirit? I know there's a good course that a man should study. Are you sure that's what you, you should be studying? Are you sure you shouldn't be studying something else? These things are important. Some people have gone to four years in university to waste their time. They are real, the real course, they will still study it tomorrow. Better be in God's You see, when you are not in God's leading, the biggest, mis, the biggest risk you stand is the loss of years. Most of the things you do outside of God's will, no matter how good they are, they don't please God. They don't move God. And when God starts business with you, you start, up, you start again. So stop wasting your time and follow what God's program for your life. Because to every man that will work with God, there is a prepared program for him. You don't copy your neighbor's program. <laughs> because pastor did this, let me go and do it. Okay, no problem. It's all right. Pastor's calling is different from your calling. Even if, though, even if you are in the same ministry. Now, 
You know that time that jam, they had only one type. People were copying. Jam now changed it. The type A, type B, type C, type D, we sit together. I'll go and copy your neighbors. You will shade B. You got to shade B. My brother, it is gone. That's what happens. He told me that this is what he did. I did it and I failed. The both of you are not the same thing. Very important. So it's better you start asking your question. You start asking yourself this question. Where I am at the moment? Who led me here? Now, if you are not led here, now you, you need to be asking God, what next? What can I do? How, do this situ- how can this situation be reformed? Very important. And this is what I keep saying. The safest place to be is where? In the center of God's will. That's the safest place to be. No matter how the storms are, as long as you know you're in, this, in, in God's will, there is safety there. God has never brought any man into any place to destroy him. And this was one of the things the children of Israel did not understand. He did not bring them out this far to take them back to Egypt. There is a promise ahead of them. He didn't bring them out. God's plan was not to destroy them in the, in, in, in the wilderness. They were the ones that destroyed themselves in the wilderness. Not God's plan. God's plan was to give them the promise. The king and the land flowing with milk and honey. But they didn't see that. And that's one of the things. One of, one of the things I also advise everyone is this. When God gives you a vision, when God gives you a plan, it is very important that you also sit to demand from him how that plan will come to reality. God is actually very specific with the kind of work he wants. See that you build according to the pattern. See, these things I'm saying, I know I'm digressing, but I'm telling you what the Spirit is saying at this moment. See that you build according to the pattern that I've given to you. And if you watch God, God is very intentional. Anything outside of that, there is a reason why he wants the breath like that. There is a reason why God wants this particular church to look this certain way. And then one day the, 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 the pastor rises up and now says, I want it to look this certain way because this is what the world wants. He's in trouble. As a kind of business God wants for you, as a kind of marriage God wants for you, God does, might not want your marriage to look like that of your neighbor. You know, the way we envy testimonies in, in, in the kingdom, eh? Lord, what you did for A, do it for me. Let's be careful. All right. Let us continue now on walking in the spirit. Revelation chapter 3 verse 6. He who has an ear. Let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. Well, you have an ear, not your physical ear anyways. If your spirit has been made alive, you have an ear. Now, the question I have for you, whose spirits have been regenerated? Are you listening? Are you paying attention to what God is saying? Is God speaking to you personally and corporately? He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. You sure you have an ear? The moment your spirit is regenerated, there is an ear. Now let me tell you something about the ear. Let me dwell a little bit about the ear now. And this might also be um, a medication to you. Follow me carefully. The more you ignore what the Spirit is saying in your spirit, the more it becomes difficult to know the will of God in your life. 
if your spirit has been regenerated, the spirit is saying something. The more you ignore it, the more it becomes difficult for you to know what the spirit is saying. So stop ignoring the spirit if you want to grow in it. Your heart is hardened every time you say no to God. But anytime we exercise our God-given capacity to hear, we become more attuned to the sound of the voice of God. We know what God is saying. Even if it's through your thoughts, you know the difference between a captured idea and a captured thought and what the Spirit of God is saying. The more you engage in it, the more you know. But if you harden, you say no, the more you find it difficult to tune into the frequency of the voice of God. Let me give you an example. While I was growing up, there is this radio we used to buy then. You know that radio? You do like this. Beep, 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 beep. Now, the first time you will get a signal, that signal is not strong. True or false? Hello, someone is not following me here. Is that not true? But the first time you do it, we'll be doing, they will be talking like radio without battery. And then you tune it again, again, then it gets hard to the point where you are hearing clearly what is happening. That is the same thing with us. We can be picking up signals in the spirit and it's so hard to know what God is saying. But the more you engage and you tap in, the more it becomes clear. The authenticity is stronger in your spirit. Yes. And you know what? Hearing from God sometimes requires trial and error. <laughs> I know sometimes you don't want to hear that, but that's true. Okay? So the way to learn how to hear from God is by doing it. So I know some of you are waiting till the day you hear, my son, my son, my daughter, my daughter, that day will not come. Are you listening to me here? When God will not wake you up. We come. My response to you is that it will do you like a dream. It will not happen. <laughs> it will require effort from you. God is spirit. Those who worship him, worship him what? In spirit and in truth. So if God will communicate to you, it will be in spirit. Then the most important thing is, is that you must learn how to tap into your spirit. So your soul, you must learn how to receive information from your spirit. That's, that's part of the things I want to share with us today. I will share with us briefly, very soon. When, even when you make mistakes, apologize to God and continue trying. Oh, Father, I thought you were the one that spoke to me. No problem. Continue. Try. It, the voice will become clearer. So keep trying. You will refine your ability to hear daily. Now, listen carefully. Hearing is a crucial part of walking in the Spirit. Yes. Yeah. So, We must learn how to hear what, our spirit, what the Spirit of God is saying. I'll show you this. The Beatitude. Um, I'll show you a secret. Let me show you this secret. It says, Blessed are the point spirit. For theirs is what? The kingdom of heaven. Blessed are the pure in spirit. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Matthew chapter 5 verse 3. Who is the person who is poor in spirit? What is poor in spirit? Very simple. A person who feels he is dependent on God's guidance. 
That's literally what it means to be poor in spirit. That has nothing to do with money or material. No, no, no. He's a person who is dependent on God, dependent on Christ. So when you are dependent on Christ, it means that you are waiting patiently to listen to him. It is a place of humility because you have realized your inadequacies. You've realized your shortcomings. You've realized that you are limited in your strength, in your abilities, in your grace. So now you are depending on God. This will help you walk in the spirit. This will help you hear from God. Because you don't want to go to journey alone. You don't want to go to battle without instructions. Proud people do not listen. That is why even naturally proud people don't listen. If they are to listen, they are listening to reply or to respond. Why? Because they think they already know. So they do not have this sense of inadequacy. They feel they are adequate enough. They feel they, they are strong enough for themselves. And this is not the the disposition God wants us to be at. So I want to address two principles. There are three principles. I'll give you two today. Maybe I'll give you one. I don't know how many, depend on the time. I'm running off very quickly. <laughs> so I don't know how many I'm going to give you today. As the Lord leads us. Number one principle. <laughs> How to walk in the spirit. Number one. Fix your attention on the activities of the Holy Spirit in your regenerated spirit. Fix your attention on the activities of the Holy Spirit in your spirit. I want to start that by you opening your scriptures to Romans chapter 8 verse 5. Romans 8 verse 5 gives us a better introduction. Thank you. New King James Version. Bless you. It says, for those who live according to the flesh, set their minds on things of the flesh. But those who live according to the spirit, the things of the Spirit. What it means is those who live according to the Spirit set their minds also on the things of the Spirit. The fundamental principle, the first principle on how to live or walk in the Spirit is by number one, putting your attention, putting your gaze, putting your affection, putting your heart on the things of the Spirit. That is the first thing. If your mind if your heart, if your eyes are on carnal things, you cannot end up walking in the spirit. You cannot end up walking in the spirit. As cliche as this thing sounds, this is one of the first mistakes we make as believers. You know, there's something I've, I've kept on saying for years. One of the ways you know a regenerated person is by the change in values and priority. If the values and the priorities of a man has not changed, it is very difficult for that person to walk in the spirit. What tickles your fancy? What makes you happy? What makes you excited? What you are looking for? These are the things that will make you stay in the spirit or not. You see the way we are here now. But what you like is playing pervert worldly songs. It's only a matter of time you will fill your mind with filth. One of the easiest way, the first foundational principle, is to set your mind on the things of the Spirit. Because these are, this will put you in the right environment to hear, to obey, and to follow. Are you listening to what I'm saying here? Put your mind... You know why? A lot of us are still, you see, you're talking about Christian dressing among ladies, among men. You know why you are still struggling about this? Because your mind is still set on paparazzi. 
I know you might not like what I'm saying, but I'm telling you the gospel truth. Your mind, your priorities, your, your role models, your whatsoever, they are still canal people. They are still canal things. In your mind, you still see yourself in BET awards. Oh, someone is not following what I'm saying here. That your little fantasy in your mind is not looking like that of a believer. Change that. You will see your life change. Someone is not following what I'm saying. Set your minds on spiritual things. It will help you walk in the spirit. Now, this is also where transformation comes in. Be transformed by the renewal of your mind. This is where transformation comes in. So the word of God starts changing a lot of things in your mind and then starts removing the, the ideologies, the this and that and that and that and puts, replaces it with the spirit things. Oh. The first environment a believer finds himself is the environment of his mind. I want to following what I'm saying. Hey, hey, hey. Do you know you can be in a pastor's house and you are thinking in your mind that you want to be in a club? You are in a pastor's room, but your mind is somewhere else. That is your first environment. And environment changes a lot of things. Environment can aid you or destroy whatever you want. Are you following me here tonight? For those who live according to the flesh, they set their minds on the things of the flesh. For those who live according to the spirit, the things of the spirit. So the first environment they change in their mind, they change it. They change it. This helps them a lot. If all you are thinking is Jesus, the cross, this, that, that, your walk, which doesn't stop you from thinking about your walk, you know, things that are good, things that are of honest report. Are you listening to me? These things that the scripture says, think on these things, right? Good. If you are thinking on them, if you are thinking on them, how would you not want to do them? Oh, are you following what I'm saying here? How do you want to do them? Hey, I don't even want to get into the process of trans sanctification through the word of God. Where God uses his word to purge your mind. Because as you grow, if God saves you, your mind is not automatically saved. You still have your memory. Someone follow me here. You still have your what? Your memory is intact. So you can be in church here and you remember what you watched three years ago. So the easiest way God does that is through his word. So he starts bringing his word. He starts bringing his word. He starts, that word comes as a sanctifier. He starts replacing what has been there. All of a sudden, you see, if you're a Christian and in your mind you still think about evil things and you're like the good old days, oh, it still has good taste inside of you. The work of sanctification is not, is not full in your heart, in your life. You know, when people remember what they used to do, you know, those days they used to call me uh, uh, Iskaba. Let me use that word. And then they used to call me Iskaba. Ah, and then you smile. Ah, 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 damn. If not because of the cross. There is still an element of criminality inside of you. Are you following what I'm saying here? Because you still remember it as a fond memory. It means that your values have not changed. Let me tell you, when the word of God has worked in your mind so much, when you remember it, you are full of, ah, the days I wasted my life. See, this is one of the ways I know counterfeit Christianity. And they tell you about the things they did in the past and they boast about it. Look at that and say, wow, wonderful. They, they, as, as though they miss it. There is one thing about the love of God. The love of God in your heart 
grows natural hatred for sin. If he's not growing it, something is wrong somewhere. I mean, I don't know why you wear white and want death at the same time. And want filthiness at the same time. Then there's something. Either that white is just a physical appearance that is not from the inside. You don't even understand what white is. See, they, they set their, their minds on the things of the flesh. So let's continue. So that you can understand better. So here Paul, Apostle Paul, was contrasting the believer with the unbeliever. And he said very clearly, all unbelievers, they live in the flesh. They also walk in the flesh. Why? Number one, they do not have the capacity to walk in the, in the spirit. That's true. But most importantly, their minds are set on the things or the desires of the flesh. You can't be desiring chicken. Chicken in your mind. Chicken, 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 chicken. If you have that money to buy that chicken, I cannot see you go and drink tea. Are you listening to what I'm saying here? Because your mind, the desires, you are craving for chicken. Some of you now, you are craving for what to eat after this service. <laughs> I said, if I, man of God, just do, say grace now. Let me go home and make myself something. <laughs> you have seen yourself eat it now. So that's the same thing with us. If you want to walk in the flesh, obviously it's because you are designed the things of the flesh. So the first thing I want to ask you is this. If you want to walk in the spirit, make sure, check where your mind is at. Check what you think. Check what you process. Now, this is what I always tell people. The thoughts that come into your mind might not be your fault. But processing it, you have the ability. I said things that come into your mind. It has come, it has come. But the problem is, are you going to process it or not? You have the ability to say no to processing it or you, have, you also have the right to say yes, let me process it. very important. And it's a daily principle that we must do. Daily. It's not, I do it today, I leave it tomorrow. If you do it today, you leave it tomorrow, your life will be the life of rising and falling. And that's not the life Christ bought for you. He doesn't want you to live a life of rising and falling. You cannot love the world and walk in the spirit at the same time. You cannot. You must choose one. Love the world or walk in the spirit. Now, I want you to pause for a moment here and ask yourself, what am I most interested of? A time came in my life, I knew football was not a sin. I knew watching football was not a sin. I knew playing video games was not a sin. But I gave it a place in my life. I said, this thing, I cannot love this thing. The way I'm loving this thing, I'm loving it more than prayer. I'm loving it more. You know, you must tell yourself the truth. You must tell yourself the truth. Do not engage in any activities frequently more than prayer, more than spiritual things. Your, the, the Bible, prayer, communion with God. including chatting, including texting. Let me tell you the gospel truth. If you want to help yourself, it is not five million things. Just simple things will change the landscape of your Christianity. Simple things. If I'm very honest, I know you love God, but you watch movies more than praying to God. Somebody's not following what I'm saying here. If you come to church now, three hours, you are angry. But you can sit down for five hours straight and watch movies without complaining. Something is wrong with your spirit. 
as, as harsh as that sounds, that's the truth. Every man should be in touch with his spirit more than anything. And remember we said that when you come into Christ, your spirit is one with, with God. It's one with the spirit of God. And guess what happens? Once you stop dropping most, once you start dropping most of those things, it is automatic. In the spirit, if you drop, you must pick something else. You start picking up more things. That's when you now start seeing that at intervals you want to pray. At intervals you want to pick up spiritual literature. You want to pick up reading the Bible. You want to pick up meditation. Because you've found and you've picked up better hobbies. This guy changed your life. You might not understand what I said again, but you will, need, you will need to watch this session again. Let's go to YouTube, watch it again. And make a point out of it. Maybe two or three. And work on it. What am I most interested in? What am I thinking the most about? What am I setting my affections on? On things above or things below? Can you just sit down and you are thinking about souls? Say, no, this one is for pastors. It's not true. It's because you are not in tune with the Spirit of God. If you are in tune with the Spirit of God, let me tell you, one of the key burdens God gives to anyone whose spirit has been regenerated is souls, evangelism. Let me tell you the gospel truth. One of the ways to know if you are healthy in spirit is your passion, your burning passion for souls. For lost souls. I tell you the gospel truth. I tell you the gospel truth. If this is not active in your life, pray that the Lord brings you to shape, brings you to health. The Lord brings you to health. I'm telling you the truth. Yes, very important. Just think about it. Where is my mind at? What do I like the most? Most of us, certainly not the Bible. Most, certainly not prayer. Certainly not study. Have you studied the Bible to the point that the Bible becomes very interesting now? That, wait, I want to tell you this. Follow me here. Forget about your devotion. Have you studied the Bible to the point that someone is knocking at your door? And that person is disturbing you because you are studying. That person is disturbing you because you are studying. Because there is something you are receiving. It's not because you want to preach. Let me open your eyes more. Person, I have a Netflix account, I must confess. I don't this account. I don't watch. And a lot of people are inside my package. What the problem is, do you, have you found out that the Bible has more shows than Netflix? You might not understand what I'm saying. Do you read Bible from cover to cover? If you know how many stories you have missed in the Bible, go back to it. You will see what I'm talking about. The Bible is so interesting. You know? It's just that it's just like a man, look at, let me show you. Let's say they put the TV on in your, in your sitting room and you walk in five minutes, stay there one minute, you walk away. You come back again, stay there three minutes, you walk away. You can't understand it. That's why when you are coming back, you are telling people, show me, show me, throw us. Guess what? This is also what happens to you in the Bible, with the Bible. You're always telling pastors, show me, show me, show me. Why? Because you have not sat down. Bible needs concentration. Do you know that the way the Bible is structured, if you study it, you will get the theme of the scriptures. You will get the theme of the scriptures. You see what God wants. Why he gave you this word. Well, there are so many things um, that is looking for our attention, our affection. But you must be careful.
you want to walk in the spirit, you must set your mind on the things of the spirit. That's, well, that's one of the easiest things. You set your mind on prayer, studying the word, this, this, that, 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 doing good, you know, fulfilling the will of God. Guess what will happen? You will be conscious of obeying God. A lot of times, what, help, what makes us get out and do all manner of things is because a lot of times we are not also conscious of obeying God. Because our attention has not been drawn to the very important fact that we are, we are God's own. And we are to obey Him daily. Okay. Colossians chapter 3 verse 1 to 2. Let's read this. Show you this, and then I have a lot to say, but let's see where we end. So, if then you were raised with Christ, seek those things that are above where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on the things. Is the scripture very well self explanatory? Let's go back to verse 1 again. It says, If then you were raised with who? With Christ. Now, guess what? Every believer has been raised with Christ. Is that not what we said? His spirit has been regenerated. It says, Seek those things that are above where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of the Father. It says, Set your mind. That's the phrase again, set your mind. So you understand that your spirit has been regenerated. The way to keep it alive, the way to be in tune with it, is to set your mind on things above where he is. Put in your mind where Christ is. What does God want me to do today? Jesus, what would you have me do today? What would you have me do in this season? That consciousness keeps you at a certain level of spirituality. I'm going out today to fulfill what God wants me to do. So the way you see some of the activities of the day can be distractions. Because there is a mindset you have now. Let me tell you one of the secrets of prayer people don't understand. When you pray, you download God's will. For your day, for your life. Are you listening to me? Well, that's, the, that's one of the things that happens. When you pray, you download God's will for your life. You know, That's one. And then number two, after doing that prayer, and God has told you one or two things, this is what I want you to do today, and you're walking past, one of the first things that happens to you is you are sensitive enough to know activities that are distracting, activities that will, let me, let me put it this way, that will puncture or deflate your frequency. If you engage in, in certain levels of prayer, there are idle talks you will not want to find yourself around. You are just sensitive in your spirit to know that this is not for you. You would just rather avoid them. Are you listening to what I'm trying to say here? See, when you, are, when you do these things, it helps you a lot. You know, in Igbo, we say, Vum, kamakalia statement. <laughs> the Spirit of God helps you to do, Vum, that statement. I, I was, I was, it was the devil's work. Uh, it's not my fault. It's Satan. It's Satan. Satan carried me there. Uh, God, pray. Study the word of God. There's, there's, there is this alert and activeness in you. Praise the Lord. I can't have this. Oh, I can't have this. Oh, I can't have this. I can't have this. Let me tell you this. One of the greatest battles you will face, in fact, mm. you know, the truth of the matter is this. If you can fight that battle and you can 
fine. That's, that's good. One of the greatest battles you will face in this dispensation is home movies. It will do a lot of homework in your spiritual life that you will not know. Something happened to me three, three weeks ago. No, no. How many months ago? I told them, I'm going to lose the TV in my, in my room. They lose everything. Lose everything. Big screen. Uh, lose them. I say, take it away. I don't want TV. Only if I come back. Because the TV can be on. You just uh, let me watch football. You'll be sleeping and you'll hear, pee. <laughs> Time you are meant to use and pray. Say, let me just watch 30 minutes football. Ah. 30 minutes, you'll check it. It's two hours. Before you know it, you don't have strength again to pray. And when you know, I say, oh, Lord, I thank you, Lord. I give you praise. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Woo! I think I shared this story with you. I think it was in 2000 and um, I think 14 or 15. I went to my sister's house. I was with the little kids. Then the children were very little. I was with them. They were watching cartoon. I was there for four days. These children, they will not allow me. They, they will want me to sit with them and watch cartoon. We we'll watch cartoon, watch cartoon, watch cartoon, watch cartoon. So, but I'll have chance in the night to pray with the scriptures and this and that. But then, when they wake up, uncle will watch cartoon with them. After three days, we started having conversation. I started seeing myself sound like their cartoon. I said, God will not allow a man of God to sound like this. So, the next day I traveled there. <laughs> when they come to my room, I lock my room. I would play with them. I lock my eyes. I said, no, I can't watch this. So the thing has played in my psyche. That's what, that's how some of these things can, can condition us. It can condition us. So you must be careful. You must be careful. Okay? Know what I'm saying, what I'm saying. You know, sometimes I tell, I tell relatable stories so that I don't want to give you ambiguous stories that you now be saying, how can these things be? I want to tell you stories that you can relate to so that you can just put the little dots and the T's and work in your life. Be careful. You know, those Instagram reels. So one, I was talking with someone and the person told me, so where do you get all these your reels? He said, that's what Instagram posts. I said, no, it's not true. The problem is that this is what you keep watching. So the algorithm will favor what you watch. Simple. Very simple. So you must be careful. Then we can leave this meeting this evening. After this meeting, now you can't watch rubbish. You know, there's this new one you plan on doing now. You know that one now? You don't, I say you don't know. Eh? Later, you can't do it, not me. Uh, if I see any of you do it in this church car park, you know? You know what I'm talking about, eh? Okay. If you do it in this church car park, we we'll have problem one on one. Now, set your will or your mind. Set your mind. Set your mind. That set your mind requires an action of the will. It is the will. First, an action of the will. You will have to exercise your will. To set your mind on the things above. Because earthly things will want your attention. And the cares of this life can choke out the fruitfulness. 
You remember the parable of Jesus in Matthew chapter 13? Jesus talked about a farmer who tossed in four developed and produced a crop and the other three failed to be fruitful in Matthew chapter 13. The scripture says in Matthew 13 verse 7, it says, and some fell among thorns and thorns sprang up and choked them. And then when you go down to 22, it says, now he who receives seeds among tongues is he who hears the word and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he, be and he becomes unfruitful. Worldly things can capture your attention and make you unfruitful. And you become so carnal. Don't be driven by money. Money should not be your driving force on earth. Beauty should not be your driving force on earth. Nothing should drive you more than Christ and to please him. That's where your mind should be at. That's the frequency of your mind. Some people, any discussion you have with them and it does not end in money, there is a problem. Some people is beauty, some people is whatsoever, some people is steeze, some people is whatsoever. These things don't put your mind there, put your mind on Christ. Set your mind on the kingdom. You will end up pleasing God more. When we keep talking about money is not the ultimate, money is not the ultimate, money is not the ultimate. God has, you know, when people tell you that God cannot make you rich, is a lie. God can make you rich. I'm telling you the gospel truth. But it's just that you have not served God wholeheartedly. You might not know what I'm talking about. When you serve God, remove your eye from money. He knows how to make... See, follow me here. What I'm, what I'm telling you is the truth. God can bless men. No? It's just that you have not seen it, how God blesses men. But one of the ways God blesses men is for men first to remove their attention from, from money first. Do not put your affection on anything outside of Christ and his kingdom. That he be glorified daily in your life. Are you pleasing? I wonder how, what we go back to Jesus every day to talk to Jesus about. You know, a lot of people tell you, they talk to Jesus, they talk to Jesus, and they are, they are yet unfruitful. No whistles for Christ. They don't. How then do you talk to Jesus? What exactly is the basis of your discussion with him every day? <laughs> you don't know evangelism? Nothing, nothing. And you are talking with him. Are you sure you are talking with him or you are talking with yourself? Ah. We leave that one? Let's leave that one alone for now. Let's, let's face what we came here for. Hmm. Now, we must live responsibly in relations, in relations to earthly things and the earthly world around us. For example, your family and this. Take responsibility over that. Your workplace, those things are very important. But your priorities and your affections, your attention and your goals in life must be God and his kingdom. That, that your attention and your priorities about God does not mean that you're not going to be a faithful husband, you're not going to be a faithful father, a responsible wife. That's not what we're talking about here. With relations to these earthly things, be responsible over them. That's, that's important. But priority. Priority is not your family. Priority is the kingdom. If priority is the kingdom, you will do your family the kingdom way. If priority is the kingdom, you will do your business the kingdom way. If priority is the kingdom, you will do every part of your life the kingdom way. Are you listening to what I'm saying here? You do it the kingdom way, the kingdom system, the ki you will get the result of the kingdom way too. And what is the kingdom result? You'll be blessed here and you'll be blessed over there. Hmm. 
You see, let me tell you, in this kingdom, we don't mix qualities. If you want to do the kingdom way, you must do it complete. The problem with some of us is we want to mix the world and Christ. It doesn't give kingdom results. You cannot bless God's work. God is the one that blesses his work. Don't be Abraham that made a mistake to think that he will be the one to bring the promise. It was the same God that promised that will still bring it to pass. He promised. He's the one that will still quicken Sarah. You must do it the kingdom way. One of the things I find out with young men, let me tell you, young men of our time, of my age, listen carefully. See this inordinate desire for money. If you want to work with God, it has to die first in you. God has no, God has no problem with blessing you, but he has to kill that thing first. But one of the first things you will start learning with God, if you have started a real relationship with God, is godliness with contentment. Because lack of contentment will drive you into a manner of sin. Are you, are you listening to me here? You will learn that God can make five abound to hundred, that make hundred abound to five. Someone did not follow what I said. See, you can live, you see, you know you think, you see, it's not our salary that keeps you. Oh, someone is, you know, you're, you're not following what I'm saying here. There are people who live, who have more salary and more money more than you, but you're living better than them. Oh. Follow me here. This is this God. When he's taking care of you, he defies economics. Is someone following me here? I want you to get this tonight. Even if, it's this, even if this is the only point I make tonight. I will leave the two and the number three. Just get this. Thing. Set your mind on things above. Because I know, you know, the problem with us is that we can't be following God and we're asking questions. What will happen of this? What will happen here? What will happen here? You get money. God brings, you know. See, let me show you. 50,000 enters your account. You know why some of us, God never releases a lot of money. 50,000 enters your account. The next thing in your mind, bah, shut down. Thank you. <laughs> there we know. Madam, Put this, put this, put this. Bring us. <laughs> I clap for you. See that 50,000 here? Have you asked God how to, how to use that 50,000? How to use that 400,000? Do you know that if God gives you instruction, you use the 400,000, God is just watching you. He sends you another 300,000. He's watching you. Let me see how you're going to use it. And then you're using it well. And it's not paying you that you are releasing it. He's watching you. What you are doing is that you are building up faithfulness in handling kingdom riches, which you don't know. Kingdom wealth. It's just, it's faithfulness you are building. But you see this thing that the moment money comes, it's about yourself, it's about your family, it's about, there's a kind of money you will touch. You won't touch the money that can, that can destroy a generation. Because it takes a lot of intrinsic restraint so that you will not use what God has brought to destroy a lot of people. And this is why a lot of ministers don't, don't have money. Give them money, buy a new car. I'm not thinking about people's life. I'm not thinking about impact. Get money, pay a house. I used to live in two-bedroom apartments. This money comes now. I'm not just rent a duplex. 
And you know what they'll say? I'll use one as a place where I'll just be doing my life recording. Eh? You are trying to bribe God. You know that's not what they're looking for. You are looking for luxury. Don't worry. Don't. Calm down. You will see what you are looking for. God is just watching you. He wants to remove your mind from Let your focus and your gaze be on him. These things will come. It can come. It may come. Okay. It was last week. Jesus sent his disciples for missions and told them not to take anything from any man. And when they came back, they told him the report of the story. He, told them, he asked them, did you lack anything? They said no. And this is where I have a problem with young ministers. This is the story of this message. When God sends you for anything, Money will never be your capital. Money will never be your capital. You know, a lot of times people say it's money. Money is what you use to do ministry. It's no money. God can take care of you. Take care of the vision he has given to you. But remove your eyes first from the glory that will come from that vision. Remove your eyes from it first. You see small boys these days, they've not done anything. The next thing, all they're looking for is paparazzi. Picture, selfie here, selfie here, this one here, this one here. They carry bodyguard here. They carry this here, this and this, this and this. You see what they set up to life and destiny. So when they can no longer keep up with that life, what happens to them? Because their heart is already tied to that kind of life. They will do anything to sustain it. <laughs> I was talking to one of my boys. And we were talking about how to get a car and all that. I told him, go and get a small car. And we, we are looking, back, we are looking at going back to some of our life, but you will not understand. Complicated life is hard. We like simple life. I say, it's better you don't expose yourself. Because once you expose yourself, you will go, ah, it, it. he told me, Pastor, and I said, you, you, you don't understand. But this, you are praying for, oh Lord, I want to this, give me 500 souls. 500 souls, what you are praying for is so that people will know that you are called. Don't worry. They will still know. <laughs> Lord, give me millions. Give me this, my big break, my big break. In your mind, if I get my big break, I build, I buy bands, I buy this now, and then I use iPhone with three cameras. So that I now hold it. I now put my key here. Starter pack. You know starter pack now? Baggy. And, <laughs> and Crocs. And I hold it. I now see myself. They now call me big boy. That's your mind. Oh, Lord, bless me. For mama, for mama. Put your mind in. On his kingdom. On his kingdom. Spiritual things. Put it there. We can lose sight of this. You know, when we lose sight of this in our offices, we enter into religious politics. Even when we come to church, the reason why we're in church changes. For recognition instead of service. Changing lives. No, we're, not, we're no longer interested in changing lives. We want people to know that we're this or that or that or that. Worship becomes dry. Becomes dry.
See, do you have financial goals? I know you have financial goals. But make sure those goals take a back seat for spiritual goals. Spiritual goals should come first. Make sure your mind is set on what the Lord wants in your life. That's the essence of what I'm saying tonight. What is the Lord looking for in my life? Don't go about money, money, money. If you go about money, uh, if you want to walk in the Spirit, pay attention to the activities of the Holy Spirit in your regenerated spirit. I'll read the scripture and then we'll pray. Matthew 6, 19 to 21. Do not lay up for yourself treasures on earth where moth or rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth or rust destroys, where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. When Jesus made this statement, he was not second guessing. Where's your treasure? Where is your treasure? Where is your treasure? Let me come down because I'm closing now. Where is your treasure? Where is your heart at? You know, sometimes, a lot of times we talk about money in church so much, giving, all that. These churches are talking about money too much. Yes, because it controls a lot of people. That's what controls the world. Money. We shouldn't control Christians. Have financial goals, but this should not be the main goals of your life. Your main goal should be spiritual goals. How to be more like Christ. How to do things for God and His kingdom on earth. That's why you're a Christian. Are you listening to me, what I'm saying here? This yes. You see, God sponsors any vision he initiates. Any vision God initiates, he sponsors it. He knows how to get this money to your account. I know you think you know. You don't know how to get money to your account. It's God that knows how to get this money to your account. Have you seen, you see church A is suffering from funds and church B is saying we don't need money again for our project. What is the difference? Go and check. This one is there doing his own thing. This one is God that wants nothing to be done. I'm telling you the gospel truth. And I'm just saying, in the southeast, ministry doesn't prosper. It's not true. Ministry prospers in the southeast. The problem is that the heart of men in the southeast is so fixed on money. What offering money can do for them? I bring the tithe, bring the tithe, bring the tithe, bring the tithe. Let's put it. Let's, let's use it and send Chinedu to, to UK. Let's send uh, Adugo to, to China. It's okay. You will run out of that. What God is not sustaining, you cannot sustain. Did you hear what I said? You cannot sustain what God is not sustaining. You will, you, you, you will resort to tricks. And tricks will still fail you. <laughs> uh, you see yeah, my prayer for you tonight is that when you go back home you kneel down and go to God in prayer say give me back the blueprint of my life you start now you have started early no matter how old you are please rest your feet